welcome to Learning Kitchen Live. My name is Jessica Birch. I'm one of the dietitians at Community Servings. Welcome to my kitchen. Before we get started today, I wanted to thank our friends at Boston Scientific for sponsoring Learning Kitchen Live and also remind you that after this session is over, the recipe and the information sheet on our spotlight ingredient, which this week is carrots, will be posted in the comment section below the video. You'll also find a link there that uh, takes you to a survey. If you have an opportunity to fill out the survey, that would be great. It just lets us get some more information about how we're doing with the classes so far, what types of topics you wanna see, if there's anything else we should be including. So thanks in advance for completing that when you have a chance. All right, so all of that being said, I wanted to share one of my favorite recipes with you this week. It is roasted carrots and cauliflower with a yogurt sauce and then arugula garlic turkey meatballs to go with it. Lots of and lots of really delicious bright flavors come together in this dish and the really nice thing about this dish is that all of the ingredients with the exception of the olive oil and salt and pepper which I had on hand at home cost less than $15 at Stop and Shop. So if we're gonna make a meal that will feed four with maybe a little bit of leftovers uh, for $15 or less, which is always really nice too, to be able to stay within maybe a more workable budget. So I will have to say that uh, a 95 degree day was maybe not the best day to choose to roast vegetables. So I actually got up early this morning and roasted the vegetables ahead of time which will probably work out for us a little bit better because they take about 25 minutes to roast, but we'll talk more about those later. Let's get started with the meatballs and then we'll go from there. So what I've got here in my bowl is a piece of whole wheat bread that I tore up into teeny tiny breadcrumbs. I didn't toast it or anything. It doesn't have to be stale. If, it, if you have a piece of stale bread, that will work well. You can use crackers, you could use a leftover English muffin, you know, whatever, but we wanna try to go for, this is about a third of a cup of uh, breadcrumbs, I would say, when it's done, but it's one, it's one piece of bread. And uh, just torn up into teeny tiny pieces. And what we're gonna do is add a quarter cup of low-fat milk to our breadcrumbs. So why are we doing this? Well, we picked, or I picked, to use ground turkey in the meatballs instead of something like beef or pork. Ground turkey is lower in saturated fat. It's better for your heart. It makes your body feel better than necessarily beef or pork will in the long run. But because turkey has less of that fat, it can dry out. This is the workaround, okay? So what we're doing is we're adding a whole grain to our meatballs by using that whole wheat bread and we're putting in that milk. The milk is gonna soak into the breadcrumbs. It's gonna make the breadcrumbs uh, retain moisture, and then that's gonna keep our meatballs extra uh, juicy instead of drying out. So while this is soaking in, and it's almost absorbed already, I'm gonna take my arugula. And so this is just two cups of arugula uh, washed and I see kind of a gross leaf there. Pick out the gross leaves. And uh, if you don't like arugula, you can use spinach instead. You can use, I'm just gonna chop these. You can use, if you've got access to herbs like basil, cilantro, oregano, uh, what else? Mm, I know I'm forgetting some, dill. <laughs> Uh, all of those leafy, soft, tender leaf herbs. You can also use a mix of those. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna, again, add more moisture to the turkey meatballs. It's gonna enhance the flavor, so this is gonna make them much more flavorful than if it was just a ball of turkey meat, right? And added bonus is we're adding vegetables into our meatballs. So we're increasing the nutrient density of the meatballs by adding in this chopped up arugula. If you've got little ones at home that you're struggling to find ways to get them to eat more vegetables, hiding things in meatballs and hamburgers is a really good way to get them to eat them. Uh, we're gonna talk about carrots in a little bit uh, more, but that's another thing that's really easy to hide in meatballs. Just get your cheese grater, sh uh, shred up those carrots, 
and fold some into meatballs or a hamburger or meatloaf or something like that, and you're getting more vegetables into that into that meal. All right, these are this is almost chopped up, and see, so it went from that big pile to just a little pile, and it's nothing fancy. Just want to make, to make sure that they're little tiny pieces. Okay. Almost done. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe one more time through. Okay. So, milk is all absorbed into my breadcrumbs. You can't even see it. There's none. You can't see it. <laughs> so, and I'm going to put in my arugula. And, oops, push my board. Okay. And then what we're gonna add in is uh, three cloves of garlic. I'm gonna just use this garlic press because it makes it go a little bit faster. But you can also always chop it up by hand or use garlic powder in place of the cloves. Uh, so if you're gonna use, I'm using three cloves of garlic if you were going to use garlic powder, I would do about a half a teaspoon as an equivalent for that. All right, so garlic, arugula, breadcrumbs. I'm going to do some black pepper. Um, I'm eyeballing it because I don't have a I don't have a way of capturing this in a measuring spoon, but this is going to be about a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. Give or take. If you want more, add more. Want less, add less. All up to you. And then I'm gonna just do a small pinch of salt. That was a teeny one. I'll do two small pinches of salt. Okay. Now, last ingredient before I put in the turkey. So I'm making a yogurt sauce, and I'm making the yogurt sauce with lemon juice. I like to use a whole fresh lemon. You can get the little containers of lemon juice. Uh, the sh that can go in the refrigerator and just squeeze out what you need as you need it. But the nice thing about having the whole lemon is that there are more parts of it that we can use. So I'm gonna use the juice for my yogurt sauce, but I'm gonna make the flavors in my meatballs even more intense, more exciting by adding some of the lemon zest. So I just have a cheese grater, um, a fine one, and I'm gonna just zest some of the lemon peel. You don't want to go too deep because then you get the pith, the white part, and that, that doesn't taste good. But the yellow part, the actual zest, gives a ton of flavor. And so, ding, I'm just going to add that in. Oh, it smells so good. And next, I'm going to give this a little stir. So I've got... My salt, my pepper, my arugula, my lemon zest, my breadcrumbs mixed up with the milk, all in my bowl. And so this is even before we get to the turkey itself. Now, while I'm making my meatballs, I'm going to he start heating up my pan so that it's nice and ready when my meatballs are ready. I'm gonna put this on medium heat. This is my hot burner, so we'll see how this goes. Hopefully I don't burn anything. Okay, and next, ground turkey. So we're just gonna plop, plop that right on in there. Get rid of my gross, dirty pan or plate. And I'm just gonna mix this all by hand. So you don't want to over mix because you don't want um, them to get gummy. So you don't have to take too long. You just want to make sure that you mix. Let's see, can I do this in a way that's visible? Here we go. Mix the, all of those other yummy flavorful things into The turkey itself evenly. All right, and it all starts to come together. You see that it's all mixed through. 
I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, sure. And smell the arugula and the lemon. These are gonna, and the garlic. These are gonna be delicious. Okay. So, next step is to make the meatballs. So you can just make like regular uh, hamburger size patties and make these into turkey burgers. Uh, but I think it's kind of nice to have, um, you know, three little meatballs on your plate. So I'm just gonna make them a little bit, a little bit bigger than a golf ball. So we'll end up with about 12, I think, when all is said and done. And um, as you're making them, if you find that your hands get sticky, keep a little bowl of water nearby and you can just dip your hands in the water and that will clean off any of the extra and, or any of the extra gooey stuff on your fingers <laughs> and make it easier to form the meatballs. All right, maybe we're gonna have closer to nine. I made them a little bit bigger. You kind of decide how big you would like them when you make them for yourself. All right, so already this dish, we've got whole grain in it because we used the whole wheat bread. We've got our nice lean protein with our turkey, our ground turkey instead of ground beef or pork. And we've got some vegetables in here with the, the arugula. So this is right here in and of itself, an excellent uh, base to a meal. Okay. Two more. I'm not out of space. I didn't line that up very well. Okay, last one. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands. Be right back. turkey free. So nice warm pan. I'm going to put in just enough olive oil to coat the bottom. So about two teaspoons would be good, but we just, if you have a nonstick pan, you don't even need to add the olive oil. I don't have a nonstick pan. So this is my workaround. And then we're going to take our lovely meatballs and plop them, ooh, sizzle, straight down in that pan and let them start cooking. Okay, so I'm gonna let these cook for about four minutes on each side. Okay, so check back in four minutes. While we're waiting on these, I want to talk about the roasted vegetables for a moment. So first, let's talk about carrots. So carrots are one of the um, easiest to find, most popular root vegetables in the United States. They store really well. You can get them at all times of the year. They're uh, easily come by. Come, they're easy to come by. So, um, and whether and they're inexpensive too, which always makes them you know very extra accessible. The thing is, is that what do you do with carrots? You can put them in a salad. You can make slaw with them, right? Or as I mentioned before, you could chop them up and put them in something like a meatball or a meatloaf. You can chop them up and put them in the uh, tomato sauce. So even if you're making just spaghetti with just a jar of tomato sauce, you can start that tomato sauce off by chopping up carrot, maybe an onion too if you like that flavor, sauteing them, adding the sauce to that. And right there, you're increasing the nutrients in that meal by adding that carrot. Roasting carrots is a really good way to make their flavors even bolder and brighter and more exciting, especially if most of the time you're eating carrots raw, roasting them is a really, really wonderful way to get a whole different flavor. 
Why do we want to eat carrots? Well, they're a vegetable, and vegetables give us phytonutrients. So the particular phytonutrient in carrots are carotenoids. They're a type of antioxidant that builds up in our skin and helps us to prevent um, environmental and sun damage. So they're really good for us. If we're going back to that idea of food is medicine, eating a carrot is actually doing really good things for your body. It's also full of vitamin A. Eating one medium carrot gives you about all of the vitamin A that you would need in the day, and it, it's all the vitamin A you need in a day. <laughs> um, you can also, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, and why do we want vitamin A? Because vitamin A is good for our eyes. It has lots of other purposes in our body, but the one that we're most familiar with is eye health. What other things are in carrots? I'm, uh, B6, vitamin C, K, there's some biotin in there, fiber. Fiber is what sweeps your body clean and keeps you healthy. So remember, eating carrots is going to be a really good way to make sure that you stay healthy. And there are lots of fun ways to incorporate them into your diet. So to roast them this morning, all I did was cut them in, I cut them in an angle instead of in little like rings, I cut them in ovals. Uh, and I tossed them with some olive oil, a tiny pinch of salt, a tiny pinch of pepper, and I roasted them at 350 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. I roasted them with some cauliflower. And that was just to add another vegetable to the, to the dish. Um, if you've never tried to cook a whole cauliflower, it's very easy. Uh, you, this is just a piece of it, but imagine that this was, you know, this big. What you would do is at the bottom, there's some green leaves. You can pull those green leaves off and then cut straight down through the middle. And what you'll see when you look in the middle is this, this is just a portion of it, but there's a large core that all of the florets grow off of, like a tree. So what you want to do is you can cut out that core and you can chop that up and roast that as well. And then you can either cut or just pull off the florets, and then you can cut them into about um, pieces that are all about the same size so that they cook evenly. So you wanna try to avoid having a teeny tiny piece and a really big piece. Just try to have a bunch of pieces that are all about the same size. And then again, just like with the carrots, you're gonna want, going to want to toss them. And these balls are getting a little talkative. Uh, you're going to want to toss them in some olive oil with a little salt and pepper and then stick them in the oven and roast them uh, at 300 degrees for about 25, I'm sorry, 350 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes until they get golden brown and uh, like pork tender. I'm going to flip these meatballs now and hopefully I will do it gracefully. Almost gracefully. There we go. Gosh, they have a lot to say right now. So, these you can either finish on the stove top. Oops, that one I split. Okay, I'll put yogurt sauce on it. Nobody will know the difference. Or you can stick these in the oven. So you can finish them on the stove top or you can stick them in the oven um, and let them ro uh, roast with the vegetables as you're finishing them off. What I guess you're trying to do two at the same time and mush them together. Okay, so for noise purposes, I'm going to stick these in the oven to let them finish off and pull out. You could, but I will say, if you're going to put them in the oven to finish them off, please make sure that the handle on your pan is oven safe, because that would be a mess that nobody wants to deal with. So we'll let those cook for about another four to five minutes now that they've been flipped. Um, and what you're looking for is an internal temperature of 165 degrees uh, minimum, okay? If they get higher, that's fine. <laughs> you just don't want to burn them. All right, so now while we're waiting for that, let me clear off my little 
station here and we are going to make our yogurt sauce. I'm going to show you how simple this is. It's really, really delicious. Really, really easy and a great way to really add an extra layer of creaminess, a little extra acidity with the lemon juice, bump up flavors and kind of bring a whole meal together. And by using things like Greek yogurt, which is high in protein and low in carbs and fat, um, and olive oil, we're giving ourselves some of the foods that our body wants. So we're going to start with three heaping tablespoons. And actually, I just realized I need a little middle scoop guy. Okay, starting over. Three heaping table ta tablespoons. Three heaping tablespoons of uh, non-fat Greek plain yogurt. If you make this with strawberry or blueberry Greek yogurt, you're not gonna like it. Maybe you will, but I can't imagine it would be very good. So three heaping tablespoons of our plain Greek yogurt. And then to this, we're going to add the juice of half a lemon. And um, I forgot to cut this. So I roll the lemon first because that starts to break out the juices or it starts to mush the juices inside. Um, and I'm just gonna, whoops, throw a seed. I see some seeds. I'm gonna try to get them ahead of time. If you have a very handy little, uh, what are those things called? Like a strainer, you can just juice into the strainer um, and it will catch the seeds. I'm gonna just juice into my hand and hope that I catch all the seeds, otherwise I can pick them out. So we're gonna put that juice of one lemon, half a lemon, start with half, see what you think. If you need more lemon juice, you can always add more, but you can't take it out. Okay. And I did pretty well. Oh, there's one teeny tiny seed right there. Got it. Okay. And then we're going to add a quarter cup of olive oil. fork, it's all you need, and then you just start to whisk it together. It might take a minute, but what you want is for that olive oil uh, to fully mix into the yogurt. So right now, if you look, I don't know if it's, you can see it very well, but it just kind of looks like streaks of the golden olive oil through the white yogurt. You want to get to a point where it's all well combined. Okay. See, that took maybe 30 seconds. Next, I'm going to take pepper. I like a lot of black pepper in this. So does my two-year-old. I don't know why, but he, this is one of his favorite things to put on um, vegetables and meat. Uh, instead of maybe like a ranch dressing, he really likes this, or like melted cheese, um, he'll do this on the vegetables instead and it's much better for him. And then a tiny little pinch, eh, a little tiny one, two tiny little pinches of salt. Okay, and give that another stir, just to combine everything in. And voila, we have a yogurt sauce. I'm gonna give it a little taste. See if I want to add some more lemon juice to it. Yeah, I think I would like some more lemon juice. And again, if and when you make this for yourself, you can decide how much lemon juice you would like. It also just depends on how large your lemon is. If it's a gigantic lemon, you won't need the whole thing. This was kind of a small guy. So we'll put a little bit more in. Now, I don't know if you've ever made your own salad dressing or anything like that, you know that when you drink, when you taste the salad dressing, if you're making it, or when you're tasting a yogurt sauce like this, the taste, the flavor is gonna be potent. Just remember that that's dressing something. It's not as if you're gonna be eating this with a, a, a spoon. Maybe you will. Okay, oh, 
just one teeny tiny seed in there. Got it. Okay, so just mixing in the rest of that lemon juice. Beautiful. Mmm, much better. I think it needs a tiny bit more pepper and a little tiny pinch of salt. Now, as I said, potent, but it's going to be delicious on top of everything. Let's see. Meatballs are probably very close to being done. Let's start putting together the plate and then we'll check on the meatballs and we will have a beautiful meal. So, bowl. This is the, you know, really tough part. So that bag of arugula that I bought for the meal, it's, I only used two cups of it. So there's a fair amount left. So we're gonna use that as the base for the meal. And you get a little salad with this yummy yogurt sauce too. Got my arugula. And then to this, I'm gonna add my roasted vegetables. So I've got my roasted carrots and cauliflower. We'll just dump some of those on top. As many as you would like. You can always add other vegetables too. Zucchini would be great. Um, all sorts of things that like to be roasted. Roasted cherry tomatoes. And very important to take out that These are looking ah, great. Take a peek. Whoops. Take a peek. There we go. So I'm just going to check my temp on these. See where we're at. One sixty five point eight. Perfect. So then I just grab my meatballs. I'm gonna do two and drizzle with my lemony yogurt sauce. And voila. Perfect, delicious, very easy, affordable, veggie packed meal. I hope that you give it a try. Remember the recipes will be or recipe will be posted along with the spotlight on the carrots in the uh, comment section below and check out that survey if you have a chance. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.